What's up everybody, AJ here, and today I want to talk to you guys about Season 1 in Overwatch. I know it is coming to a close, I know some of you may care, some of you may not, but for me, I just recently found out after just looking up everything that I'm actually okay at the game. I managed to climb from 50 to 65, so I will be getting my 300 points just enough to get a golden gun in the game, which apparently is 65 to me personally, because I went through school in America, you get graded from 0 to 100, one, like 90 to 100 being an A so like at 65 you're getting a D so you're basically failing but apparently to Jeff Kaplan that's amazing it's supposed to be treated as amazing and they're completely redoing the entire competitive scene for season two but aside from that the the things that I got from season one that I actually earlier made a call out about Zenyatta being really weak and that he should get some more HP and they buffed it to 200 now apparently he's too strong so they're nerfing his discord but I actually want to touch on the things that are gonna happen after they nerf the discord I personally feel that once Discord is lowered, the things that are able to shut Genji down are also going to be lowered, and I think that Genji is going to be a very strong hero. I know when I first talked about Genji in the very beginning, I didn't feel like he was that strong, but after seeing the way that he's played and how you can manipulate things, and if you use a little bit of teamwork and coordination, Genji can be a very strong hero in the game. Now, according to statistics and pick rate and everything else, he doesn't look that strong at the moment, but I personally feel that Genji is either a really 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 strong or be sleeper op and that's just from things that i've personally noticed while playing the game now my it's just my opinion it is not fact that this is a hundred percent true but i honestly feel that anna and genji are going to be seeing more play because the lucios and yada being the two most picked supports in the game the only real way to actually shut them down is to have a very very good anna which is why anna is not necessarily the best right now because she's just difficult to play but once people start learning how to play her efficiently I feel that she can very well shut down the Zenyatta Lucio combo that is just so predominant in the competitive scene and in most of quick play as well. Now, the reason I say that is because Anna's anti-heal grenade definitely helps against a Zenyatta ultimate when you're also nano boosting the Genji who goes in and just tries to one-shot everybody. Now, even if that fails, because Genji and Anna have two of the fastest charging ultimates in the game, you can just retry that combo. Usually, soon after the Genji respawns if he happens to die or if nothing happens and it fizzles out. If you're able to get one of the supports to ultimate, then that makes a huge opening for the next assault that you guys go in. That puts a lot of stress on two different people that have to coordinate when they're going to use their ults or when they're going to hold them. So those two things being said, it's very interesting. I think that that's going to see a lot of changes for the competitive scene coming up and as well as quick play. It's just as long as people are able to coordinate, which again requires a lot of thought process and waiting for things to happen and making sure that your teammates are going to be competent enough to follow through with some of the things that you do. From there with the things that I've mentioned so far, I would like to also point out that I think that as things develop, people are going to start positioning differently to make it easier for supports to heal them. Since that is big on line of sight and that a lot of people don't really play around the supports, they try to solo things and do things on their own and they get run over by a team that's coordinating and working together, which is basically how most team games work. Unless you've got that one godsend player that can 1v6 the entire enemy team and just destroy everything in their sight. Now, like I think that those things are definitely really cool to see, but I feel as things go on, people are going to start working on teamwork a little bit more and they're going to start coordinating to make things happen like even with the games with friends videos that you see me do consistently we're always coordinating even though it's like really funny and ridiculous and we have some moments that are just stupid we are coordinating together constantly but we're able to do so in a way that we just understand what our team needs at a specific point in time and we make plays based around what's going on and some of those cool things that i really want to work on are nano boosting people when you necessarily need it specifically in my last symmetry video that i did where i was like give it to me now and just making call outs like that and just making things happen and setting things up and committing to it and being confident in what you want to do can definitely set the pace for a game as far as being a better player at the game as well as getting some very interesting and funny moments for some of the videos that I've recently produced and it's always fun to see the different kinds of things that me and my group of friends are able to come up with to do and I definitely want to do more things where we do custom games as a big group which by the way if you are ever interested at all in hanging out with me playing video games with me or even listen to me record videos like the one that you're listening to right now feel free to join my discord there will be a link in the description below that you guys can check out if you want to come and hang out with me and then we can 
play games together and it'd be great. And definitely Overwatch. I love Overwatch and I want to play the game with all of you guys. And I have some great custom game ideas that would be absolutely hilarious for us to try out. And I want you guys to come hang out. So, of course, go ahead and do that. Could probably get some viewer games in, do some stream games, have a big stream, have you guys come hang out, and then it'll be a great time. But anyway, moving on from that, back with the season one recap for me, I personally felt a huge amount of ranked anxiety. Now, I know a lot of you struggle with ranked anxiety because it's something that you're getting judged for it. It's not fun when you get judged for things and you feel like you're going to do bad. Oh, all the pressure's on me. If I do poorly, then we're going to lose. Or some of you have the opposite of that, where it's like, oh, my teammates fucking blow, and we're never going to go anywhere with these stupid ass idiots, and I'm always being held back by my team, and that always sucks, and I completely understand that. But at the end of the day, for me personally, when it comes to ranked anxiety, I always personally feel like I could do significantly better. Like, I've always, I've messed up a little bit here, I fucked up there, you know, just little things here and there that bits and pieces that just kind of eat away at me, and I'm just like, you know what? I could have played so much better, and because I didn't, my team lost. And I, I get that all the time. And even when I'm playing quick play sometimes, I get that little bit of just ounce of stress where it's like, you know, I really want to win this game, I really want to do well, I want to see if I can improve, and, you know, I just gave it my all and I still fucked up. I made one mis crucial mistake. I lost us the game. I didn't heal in this particular area at this particular time, and we lost the game because of me. And that's just something that I've always had through any game, even through League of Legends, and that got me to, um, I think, Plat 1, just practicing constantly and just being like, ah, I can do so much better, I can do so much better. And eventually, through saying I could do so much better, I got better. Didn't necessarily feel like it, but at the same time, I was playing against harder opponents. I was playing against more people that understood clearly what they needed to do, so I was making mistakes against people that make less mistakes and then keep going against higher and higher level opponents as far as skill-based, as far as their elo, as far as whatever you want to call it. Eventually, I got better at the game because I started to see things that other people didn't at particular levels of their development of getting better at whatever game it may be. That's always been something that's been really interesting to me, and that's why I'm spending so much time with Overwatch, is because I wanted to learn how to get better at something that I don't feel like I was going to be very good at. I, I don't think I'm going to be very good at Overwatch. I don't necessarily feel that being at 65 is that good anyway, but for what I am and what I have gotten to so far, I still want to learn how to get better, and I want to make funny videos at the same time. I have great ideas for a bunch of different videos that I want to do for Overwatch specifically. I also have great potato animation videos videos that I'm doing, which I know I haven't made one of those in a little while, but I do plan on it and I do enjoy making them. But at the end of the day, what it comes down to with the competitive season one is that I had a great deal of stress because it was just ranked anxiety going up or down and skill rating almost every other match. Though I do, I do want to make mention that I feel like the weight of what you do in the game is too reliant on statistics of what you personally do. Like I feel like the medals weigh way too much for the game as opposed to other things in the game. For example, I feel like when my friends level up entirely from let's say 60 to 61 because they were playing primary DPS and they average three gold medals a game, whereas I play off secondary healer and I made the one crucial heal as Zenyatta to block the entire ult spam combo from the enemy team and we win the game because of that singular ultimate that I, because I only got one silver and nothing on anything else that I get maybe barely less than half of a tick from 60 to 61 so my other friends are leveling up a level each game and i'm leveling up maybe i'll level up once every five games because i don't play primary dps or i don't play primary support healing i don't have any gold medals but i'm making sure that i'm making those plays that keep the team alive and keep the team well and make sure that we are able to win and because of that it's just it's just so much extra stress because i know that if i lose a game and i'm going to lose a lot and if i win a game I'm probably going to not get that much because of everything being weighted so heavily and it's it feels it feels less encouraging to play a support and do something that's right for the team as opposed to just playing a support for the goal of getting gold medals on everything and that's something that I didn't like from rank that's just something that I felt I'm not sure if anybody else has personally experienced that but I feel like for me personally I don't feel like that is very good for a ranked environment I feel it should be more weighted towards win loss and streaking and then some for how well you did in each match should way into that whether it be good or bad all things considered I still am very happy with where I got to. I thought I was going to be happy at 50. I, s I started at 52. And then in a re uh, and then in a video not too long ago, I mentioned that, you know, I want to hit 60. 
and then I end up hitting 65 from climbing. And I had a 60% win ratio in ranked and I was very happy. And I'm really curious to see how far I can go into season two since they are changing the entire ELO system. And then I'm also going to be doing a lot more viewer games and hanging out with people again on my Discord. And I want to hear what your all's opinion about Overwatch is. How do you feel about this game now that the first season is coming to a close? The game's been out for a while. Everybody's been playing it. And I just want to hear your all's opinion about what you feel about Overwatch. I want to know what you guys feel about this game. Me personally, I love it to death. Do I still play League? Absolutely. I played it today and it was fun. Did some games with the Sunny Squad. Did some games with some other friends that I haven't played with in a while. It's just, I still play League. It's just, I don't feel the necessity to be super good at the game anymore. I just like to enjoy it with friends and maybe help some people out with recordings from time to time. But at the end of the day, I still love League of Legends and I'm still playing it and I still want to play it. I'm not going to come up with an excuse like, oh, I'm banned forever on the game. I don't want to play it anymore. This is the worst game ever. No, League of Legends has been a great game. I very much appreciate it and everybody that has come because of that content that I created for the game. So League of Legends is always going to be a huge staple for me. And then Overwatch is just the next thing that I enjoy. I, I enjoy Overwatch and I think it's great. And I want to be really good at Overwatch so I continue to play it. And hopefully one day, you know, maybe I might be one of the people that gets selected to go to the world event for Overwatch, which would be absolutely hilarious to me. And I think that's kind of a goal that I'm shooting for now since that I really want to be good at the game. And I feel like the only way to get good is to practice. And yes, I'm level 320 something now. I've been playing probably even 330. I don't remember exactly, but I play the game a lot. I enjoy it very much and I want to get better at it. So I think that's I think that's the next step in my chapter. I still want to create great content on Overwatch gameplays, on League of Legends stories, which I'm still working on those. I'm working on the next potato one, which I'm not going to spoil it, but I, I'm working a little bit more on instead of it being like a glorified PowerPoint, it's actually going to be something more of an interactive sort of animation, hopefully. But again, it's something I enjoy doing. All of this is I'm doing it because I enjoy it, because if I didn't enjoy it, what's the point of doing it? But anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Glad if you made it this far if you didn't or if you did then so good to hear from you guys and i'll say it again i said it like three times now but you know just whatever come hang out in my discord i talk to everybody i am very approachable as you can probably see from the comments i guess i'm starting to get less of the oh my god senpai noticed me and then it actually just turns into a conversation because i actually respond to the comments that you guys leave for me and i always i always respond to the people in my discord you guys can message me whenever you want to and i will see you guys in the next video all right, peace late, everybody.